Cosmo Blazer was released on January 25th, 2013. While this set is primarily known for introducing the Fire Fist archetype, it also released some key pieces of support for a rivaling strategy that was already dominating the format, Mermail. In this series, both MBT and myself will be traversing the sands of Yu-Gi-Oh!'s history. Each episode will take a deep dive into Yu-Gi-Oh!'s past formats and unlock new strategies as new sets become available. Strap yourselves in because anything is possible. Welcome to the history of Yu-Gi-Oh!. If you want 5% off any singles or sealed product, click the affiliate links in the description and use code SEMO5. And clicking the TCG Player affiliate link before you shop helps support us to provide you with more amazing content. Well, it's early 2013 and Yu-Gi-Oh! is currently underwater. I mean, a water deck is good. It's actually doing fine. It'll really be underwater when the dragon rulers come out. The most important thing going on in Yu-Gi-Oh! right now is Atlantean Mermail, and Alex will explain that in much further detail than I will. But keep in mind that the discussions that are being had surrounding that deck are some of the most thought that's ever gone into Yu-Gi-Oh! Do we play Gen X Undyne? Do we play Abysteus? These questions that we take for granted now were very much unresolved at the start of this format. But as February looms near, the regional scene was dominated not only by Mermail and many of the decks that we saw from the previous format, but also by Fire Fist. Fire Fist is a series of level 4 beast warrior monsters that Xyz spammed pretty easily. They also slotted into a strong existing shell in Dino Rabbit. Eschewing the dinos and including the beast warrior monsters, this deck is now able to access things like Shockmaster by finding a rescue rabbit, an additional monster, and something like a fire formation Tensu. It's an incredibly robust and comprehensive deck, but unfortunately, the list you're looking at is not very strong. <laughs> this is clearly a month one list, and as people figured out what was good and what wasn't, that number of Fire Fists went drastically down. Cards like Tencent were cut from some builds to focus on more effective ways of preventing your opponent from getting off to the races. For now, let's talk about the individual monsters. Brotherhood of the Fire Fist Bear, when it deals battle damage to your opponent, allows you to set a fire formation spell directly from your deck. That can be Tanki or Tensu. It also allows you to send fire formations from your field to the graveyard to pop monsters. Brotherhood of the Fire Fist Dragon is Cope. If you activate a fire formation spell trap, you can set a trap specifically from your deck, and you can send two face-up fire formation spell traps to the graveyard to reborn a fire fist. This card reads really well on paper, but in practice, it's only good if you're already way ahead. And finally, Brotherhood of the Fire Fist Gorilla is kind of like Bear, except it destroys spell traps. After that, we've got two Rescue Rabbit and three Gene Warped Warwolf. I cannot explain to you how cool it was to see this card when you were a kid. A four-star monster with two thousand attack. We'll never get anything better than that. We've got one Book of Moon, one Dark Hole, three Fire Formation Tanky, two Fire Formation Tensu, two Forbidden Lance, one Heavy Storm, a Monster Reborn, triple MST, double Pot of Duality, double Bottomless, double Dimensional Prison, three Fire Formation Tensen. This is such a weird card. It increases the attack of a Beast Warrior by 700, but also increases the attack of all Beast Warriors by 300. So it's like a static thousand and also an AoE. It is... Very frustrating. Solemn Judgment, 2 Warning, and 2 Starlight Road. We're a back row deck after all, and for some reason, Heavy Storm is still legal. In the side, we've got Veilers and Dimensional Fissures, heralding back to the popularity of Macro Rabbit, Soul Takers, and uh, Mind Controls, Double Dust Tornado, a Gozen Match, Triple Rivalry, and Soul Drain, just boarding into the most effective floodgates in any given scenario. In the extra, we've got Double Stardust for the roads. We've got Abyss Dweller, very important in the matchup we are going to be playing today. Double Tiger King, uh, one copy of Evagishki Marogeist, Cowboy, Gemnite, Pearl, Maestroke, Shockmaster, Acid Golem of Destruction. Theoretically, there are some ways you can make this card, but I don't think they're going to come up. Black Ship of Corn, Photon Papli Operative, and Steel Swarm Roach. I'm hoping we can Dino Rabbit cosplay our way out of the Shirt of Shame, but with this list, I'm not super optimistic. All right, who's ready for Mermail Part 2 Electric Boogaloo? I guess if it was electric, it would kill off all the Mermails, but in any case, we are piloting Mermail for a second 
episode in a row, because although Cosmo Blazer debuted Fire Fist support for the very first time, it also gave us more Mermail support, and arguably some of the best support that the archetype could have ever asked for. So let's go ahead and do the card by card and discuss how the deck has evolved from the previous episode, because a lot has changed substantially. So first up, we still have our Atlantean package, the three Dragoons, the one Heavy Infantry, and the three Marksmen. I think decks started to cut down on Heavy Infantry because popping face ups wasn't as important because the main engine of Mermail could pretty much hit over most things in general, so you really didn't need all that many copies of this card, but the effect is still double summon another Sea Serpent did come up with D.Va, and you know, it's nice to have this card in a pinch if you need, but Marksman being able to either get you a ton of damage on the field for its battle effect, or being able to pop set cards is key to be able to make sure that you can combo off, and Dragoons is just like the best one, it gets even better in tandem with one of the new cards, Abysteus, but we'll go ahead and get to this later. We still have three D.Va, of course, because it's one of the best cards in the deck, two copies of Gun, so with the release of Teus, Gun becomes a lot more viable because now we have more discard outlets. This gives us another prime card to search off of Pike, but also now because we have Teus, we have more discard outlets to be able to send Mermails to the graveyard to trigger abilities, whether it's something like Gun or one of the Atlanteans, but Teus in and of itself also searches you another Mermail card in the process. It's also level seven, which is quite relevant, and even 2400 defense is pretty sizable in some matchups and could be quite relevant. So because of this, Gun is a key piece of the deck now because the deck sort of becomes more seven centric because the main win condition of this deck is Mermail Abyss Gaios, and this card is just a house. It needs any two level seven waters. While this face-up card has Exceeds material, level five or higher monsters cannot attack, and once per turn during either player's turn, you can detach an Exceeds material, negate the effects of all face-up monsters your opponent currently controls that have less attack than this card until the end of this turn. So this is a blanket skill drain that you can use at quick effect speed, stuff that's level five or higher can't attack, which pretty much ensures Gaios isn't going to go anywhere anytime soon, because not to mention he's 2800. So very easily, if you're getting sevens into the grave, you're able to bring them back with gun to facilitate these level seven strategies much more easily. We have another all-star out of Cosmo Blazer, which is Abyss Lead. Now, for all intents and purposes, this effect could come up. Similar to Megalo, you contribute another attack position Mermail and actually get a card out of your opponent's hand, which is nice, but it's a level seven and has 2,700 attack points. This means that off of like Abyss Sphere, if you let Lin go to the grave, you can summon lead and have a 2,700 beater for the following turn that will stick around. So that is just massive and a way for this deck to get much more aggressive than it was before. We still have the triple Lin, we have the triple Megalo, we have the triple Pike. These are the all-stars from the uh, Abyss Rising set when we first got the Mermail support. But then we have Teus as well. Teus is really where the deck all comes together. There was actually a debate as to whether or not people should play Teus because it sort of conflicts with a card like Genix Undyne. And guess what? Yes, you absolutely should play this card because Teus is nuts. Like I said, more discard outlets for your Atlanteans and your Gund and the like. The fact that it searches you any of your missing combo pieces, the fact that it's a seven to synergy and allow you to get to your win condition, which is Gaios. This is everything the deck could have asked for, and I really hope we get to show that off in today's episode. That does it for the monsters, though. For the spells, Dark Hold, Double Forbidden Lance, we're trying to make sure that our Mermails stick, so we are able to then either go for an OTK or just establish a Gaios that isn't going to be outed. Heavy Storm, Triple MST is in that same philosophy, and of course, one Reborn, because Reborn is a fantastic extender. And then we have Pot of Avarice rounding out the spells. And then for the traps, Triple Abyss Sphere, Two Abyss Squall. This is a brand new card as well that says Target Three Mermails in your grave, special summon those targets in defense, their effects are negated, they can't declare an attack, and they're destroyed during the end phase, which is all irrelevant because you are now playing a searchable copy of Soul Charge in your Mermail deck. What you're going to do is if you have this card searched off of something like Megalo, if you're summoning out two level sevens and something like an Abyss Lind, then you're gonna be able to overlay the two for a Gaios. In the end phase, Lind will kill itself, which is perfectly fine, because then you get to summon any of your other Mermails that will stick to the board. So this card is incredible. And games during this time weren't decided on turn one or two, so you had the ability to actually set this card up, and this allowed you to lock games down quickly. And not to mention, even if they outed one Gaios, there's a pretty high likelihood they weren't going to be able to out two. And then rounding out the main deck, we have a Solemn Judgment, which is sort of a catch-all to stop stuff that can either out our Gaios or crack our board, like Dark Hole and the like. Then for the extra, we have a Catastor, an Armory Arm, a Black Rose, a Duloran, a Gungnir, a Mistworm, a Scrap Dragon, and a Hyper Librarian. And then for the Xyz, a Dweller, a Gachi Gachi, two copies of Gaios in case the first gets outed, a Big Eye, a Leviathan Dragon, and a Zen Mains. And then for the side, we have double copies of Maxi, one Nekomane King. So this was Billy Brake's version of this deck, and I believe there was this sort of Gishki Mill FT 
FTK deck. So this was a card cited specifically for that to hedge against that matchup, but Billy never ended up citing it. Two copies of Trigodia to pair with our Maxis, of course. Two Messenger of Peace, the Billy Break special. And then for the traps, two Deck Devastation Virus. This is pretty nice because a lot of our extra deck monsters actually meet the condition for this. You know, stuff like Cataster or uh, Hyper Librarian, or even something like Big Eye could actually uh, be a target for Deck Dev. So that's very funny for the monsters that have low attack stats. And then we have two Dust Tornado, two Ghost in Match, and two Mind Crush for various matchups. So guys, I cannot wait to see how this one's going to go out. I mean, it's Fire versus Water, Mermail versus Fire Fist. This is a format that a lot of people love, and I hope that we get to do it proud. So ladies and gentlemen, let's not make you wait any longer. It's time to do it. in joseph the water's fine you did so well in the last episode when you were fighting with the fish aren't you ready for round two no and you know <laughs> this is round two of eight uh right? i think you would be hard pressed to find a deck with more longevity that went through more different transformations than exactly water um maybe burning abyss uh but that's still a way off definitely and obviously this is like one of the biggest transformations of the deck because cosmo blazer not only introduced your entire archetype, but also gave support to a water deck, which is strange. But uh, Teus, a fantastic new card for the deck that I can't believe people had to actually like fight over and have right? discussions as to whether or not this was a good card. You know, 2013, 2012 Yu-Gi-Oh is a different beast, I suppose. <laughs> you simply don't need it, you know? Uh, it. Uh, you already have all of the extension that you, why would you ever play a card like this? And of course the answer is, um, it's broken as hell. Buddy, I'm ready to get into it. Let's go ahead and shout the patron. It is, thank you, Simo, MBT Gage, the RJB0, and Ruxin34. That's like the most nice, that's like the nicest thing anyone's ever said in any of these patron names. Wow. So, uh, yeah, I, yeah. no problem. I appreciate yeah. it. Uh, thank you for not writing about my feet or something. Like, it's a welcome, welcome change. Yeah, that'll be next episode. Uh, yeah. Buddy, got the hands up for me? I've got the hand. I'm going to go even. It is odd. Uh, I Ooh, picked one. Okay. It is the optimal number of Teus to play, according to the most brainiac comments on Duelist Grounds. Let's see. Coming from the person right. who's about to just go set five pass. Whoa, yes, whoa, 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 whoa. The case. We're setting four, okay? So big okay. difference. Big hmm. difference. That's true. One less to lose to Heavy Storm. Uh, we're going to go... Do we draw for first turn? We do. This is a little less ideal. I just think I can't really play around Storm that much. If you have it, you have it. I have we we've talked about this a couple of times, but it is so frustrating the ever present threat of Storm this late into Yu-Gi-Oh. Like, come yep. on. I All also right. love how it was banned, and then they're like, they "Nah, the back. game needs Storm. Bring it back. Oh. Bring it back." <laughs> you know, um, and the more I play. Unfortunately, the more I agree with them, I think Storm really does create this really interesting back and forth. Uh, I do still hate Cold Wave and Heavy, though. I'm going to begin with uh, Brotherhood of the Firefish Dragon. Ooh, okay. So this deck was on Dragon. Yeah. Interesting. Uh, Not this is standard. definitely first first build of Firefist for sure. I don't think this card's that bad, but no. it's like later on they cut this card for sure. You want to go ahead and uh, tell us what this does? Yeah, so uh, the good Firefists are Gorilla, Bear, and I think that's it. Uh, but <laughs> if you go a little deeper into the pool of fire fists, you find some maybes. And this is one of the maybes. It, when I activate a card like Tanky, allows me to set a fire formation trap immediately from the, my deck. And if I like, I can send two face-up fire formation spell traps to the graveyard to target a fire fist in my grave and special summon it. It's a way to, like, rank four spam. Sure. Except the deck already has a way to rank four spam. It's called Rabbit. All right, so with this Tanky, we are going to get... Brotherhood of the Fire Fist Bear. There's the boy. And with this dragon, we are going to get Fire Formation Tencent. Okay. And Tencent uh, will buff all of your uh, Fire Fist monsters uh, by a small attack boost, and by and then it gets like a permanent attack boost while it's face up. Correct. Yeah. This is it's such a strange card. It is it is an AOE buff except for one guy who gets a lot more. Uh, okay. We'll set that card. And then, I mean, you called it, dude. Let's just uh, let's just lose to Heavy Storm, you know? <laughs> All right. Let's see if I'm the best player in Yu-Gi-Oh. I'll draw. And I am not. That oh, is God. unfortunate. Uh, I also think, too, with like later iterations of Fire Fist, they dropped Dragon because they just dropped the bad traps. Yeah, no. Uh, but... Tencent <laughs> is not a very good card. They just don't have... That's the problem with Fire Fist. Tanky, one of the greatest cards of all time. Yep. Every other Firefist spell trap, eh, 
kind of mid. Uh, I need to figure out how to navigate this disaster that I'm faced with because I am staring down three back row. Uh, I say three back row because I don't consider Tencent to be a real card. Oh, so, we'll see if you consider uh, it after this one. All right. I'm going to kick things off with a normal summon of Pike. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm not super happy about that, but not a lot I can do. All right. I will use the effect. Let's pitch this Marksman. Uh, we're going to go ahead and get a card here. All right. We're going to add another Marksman. And Marksman Effect, we're going to go ahead and target this bad boy right here. That is my bottomless trap hole. Happy to see that. A really dead card in this matchup. Next, I'm going to run out Teus pitching Marksman. Okay, that is not ideal. Um, hmm. So here I can go chain link one Teus. Well, chain link two. Oh, hold I, oh, on sorry. there, Sparky. Do you, have, do you have a warning? Sorry. I sorry. do. I maybe should have just warning to the pike. Ugh. But yeah, we'll okay. take the Teus. Sure. So uh, I don't know why I'm losing 2,000. But yeah, Teus is gone. But Marksman still triggers here. So I'm just going to pop your other back row. Uh, it is something I'm going to chain. I will lance your pike. Okay. So my pike goes down to 800. And I know you have the Tensin. I don't get the search from Teus because the summon was negated. I'm just going to pass. Okay. Uh, pike goes back to 16, right? Correct. God, you're kidding me with these draws. I imagine there's probably a better way to play out that turn, but to be fair, I took out three of your back row, so. It's decent. It's like setting up for next turn. Uh, unfortunately, most of the fire fists, in order to do anything, require that you take a shitload of damage. I can do it like this. I am going to normal summon a second dragon. Interesting. Okay. Yeah, I, I don't find it particularly interesting, honestly. Uh, we will overlay these two for Brotherhood of the Fire Fist Tiger King. So I'm going to uh, trigger this effect. I'm going to detach a material. Or sorry, the first effect. <laughs> We're going to set Yeah, the first effect doesn't detach effect. anything. You just get it for free. I am going to get a ten Su. Okay. This gives you an extra normal summon of a beast warrior. I'm going to activate the Tensu. Summon Brotherhood of the Fire Fist Bear off of the Makes Tensu. Sense. Uh, I will go to combat. Uh, I'm going to bear over your Abyss Pike. It's very strong, so I'll take two and you get to trigger the bear effect. Uh, we are going to get another tanky. And we'll just set that bad boy. And then we'll get in for 22. Second main, I will activate this tanky. We will go ahead and grab uh, another copy of Fire Fist Bear. I'm literally just spinning my wheels here. What am I doing? I thought I had an extra summon that I could use to make a Abyss Dweller at the end of this long chain. I don't know, buddy. You already got two normal summons. That's uh, more than most decks get. <laughs> oh, my gosh. All right. Well, we're just going to have to end on this. Go ahead. All right, well, I need to hope for a... Oh, I guess that does it. No. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, uh, I got the dark hole. <laughs> That's a good one. Okay, uh, so we lose, what, everything here? Yes. All right, uh, I'll trigger Tiger King here. Uh, which is actually kind of sick because you actually get to pull this off. So we get, I didn't think we were going to show this off this episode. I'll be honest. So we'll send all three of these to the graveyard uh, to summon two beast warriors with the same attack in defense position. So we are going to get Brotherhood of the Fire Fist Gorilla and Brotherhood of the Fire Fist Bear. Uh, in defense, sir. No, no, no. Be cool about this. Yeah, all right. I'll figure this out as I go. Uh, I'm going to start with Reborn targeting Pike. Oh, you're kidding me. Yep, that's pretty good. Uh, Pike effect. I will pitch Gunned. That's that's so strong. Yep. All right, so Pike's going to trigger first. I get to get an add here. I think the add, it has to be a level three. If I could get Diva here, that would be disgusting. But sadly, that's not how Yu-Gi-Oh works. Uh, instead, I will grab the last Marksman. Gunned now triggers. I'm going to resurrect, I think think the Teus? Well, you've got Ooh. no other options. Oh, it has to be Mermail. Okay. Yeah. I'm like, I'm like, oh, can I get back Marks? No, that'd be broken. Thank okay. God, no. Cool. Yeah, that would be a, a much different game in that case. All right. So we'll bring Teus out. That's fine. Then I will go ahead and run out this Marksman. This gonna... is because you reborn to the Pike. Correct. Yeah. So I'll go battle. I'm going to go Pike into your gorilla. Mm-hmm. I'm going to go Teus into Bear. Sure. I'm going to go Marksman Direct. Yep. Trigger Marksman. I'm going to summon Dragoons from the deck. And I'll take 18. And then second main, uh, I can overlay here, but I don't really have like a good four to go into. The other issue is I know you have Bear. So like you can go Bear, 
and like start picking apart my board a little bit, which isn't exactly great. I actually kind of like this. I'm gonna overlay for Dweller. And then I think I'm just gonna pass there. Anything in standby? I don't think I need to do anything here. Now you're good. So this Dweller's at 22. He is getting the buff from having a water monster as material. I am going to normal summon Gorilla. That is fine. I will activate Tensu. Last card in hand is Bear. Uh, I have to sure. do this the opposite way. Um, I'll trigger Tensu summoning Bear. Uh, this is fine. Okay. Uh, I, uh, we'll go combat. I will attack your Marksman, and I'll Tencent here. Sure. So that's going to buff him by seven, or actually buffs him by a thousand, because yeah, so all Beast Warriors gain 300. So he gets he goes to 27, because you also get the 100 from Tensu here. Right. <clears throat> okay. So 27 here into my 1900 marksman. Oh, that's... marksman's at 19? Yes, Dweller gives all waters 500. Oh, that's even better. All right, in that case, we are going to go gorilla into the Teus. Gorilla into Teus. So Teus is 22 to your 29, we established, correct? Or 27, you're 27. So I will take five. Uh, I'll trigger Gorilla here. You get to get a set, sure. Uh, we'll grab Tanky, I suppose. I was gonna say, you still have a Tanky. I believe that is my last target, in fact. Uh, and then we'll go Bear over Marksman. Okay, so this will be, your Bear is at 2,000, 300 from the Tents and 100 from Tensu to my 19. So I'll take 100 from this. And you get to trigger Bear here. Uh, no, I do not. Because you don't have any targets. <laughs> that is correct. Okay, uh, under regular circumstances. <laughs> uh, second main, I'll go tanky. Uh, I'm going to grab The dragon. last dragon. Yeah. <laughs> Dex on three dragon, by the way. Uh, and then we'll go bear effect. Pitch the tanky to pop Abyss Dweller. I will chain Dweller detaching Dragoons to trigger Dragoons as you kill the Dweller. Uh, so I will grab any Sea Serpent, huh? Any mm. Sea Serpent. There's a couple of them. Your field is Gorilla, Bear, and you have Dragon in hand. Uh, I will just run out. Only having one card in my hand makes it slightly difficult. I I'll just grab Diva. Sure. Okay, so second main. This is a little crusty. I want to go into Abyss Dweller here because it's so good against you. The D.Va really complicates things. I'm going to have to think for a sec. I will say I gave Tencent some shit earlier, and, uh, you know, it was able to help you clean up the board in this exact instance. So. I mean, Tencent is a poopy card, but, yeah, it has some it has some applications. Uh, the decision I'm trying to make is if I should make Roach here or not. Um, Ooh, okay. Interesting. Roach is a sick card, uh, but actually doesn't beat normal D.Va into heavy infantry into armory arm, of all things. Uh, I guess Hilarious. it contests that. Yeah, this is stupid and bad. I will I will go for Roach. Yeah. <laughs> okay, sure. What else would you get off D.Va? Oh my god, Dragoons is a sea serpent. Uh, but Dragoons is level, but four, level four. So yeah. I cannot grab it off of D.Va. I wish. I think every mermail player under the sun wishes D.Va could grab Dragoons. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay, we'll just sit here. Go ahead. Interesting. Okay. Uh, we'll draw. That's uh, not bad. Okay. So Roach only stops inherent summons, correct? Uh, yeah. Roach only stops summons that do not start a chain. Yes. I know I'm going to trigger a lot of people, the fact that I just said that, but that's fine. <laughs> We're being um, realistic here. We are. You have Dragon in hand. It's actually pretty good that Dragon's follow up here because you have two fire formations. Because like, even if I clear Roach, you can just normal Dragon summon something. Yeah. It's not hard to see like why people liked this uh, yeah. in the deck. I mean, I obviously they dropped it eventually. Uh, the card is pretty bricky. Um, yeah, you can see in this game, we just drew a whole bunch of fire formations that didn't do a ton and not a lot of like really good power spell traps. You know, it's not, the logic is there. You can see why people right. were considering it. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Uh, all right, let's out a roach, I guess. I'll run out Lind. That's a good one. Battle, I'll crash into roach. I'll take four, trigger the Lind. Uh, let's grab a new card, shall we? Let's grab lead. Yeah, lead's a good one. He's a big fucker. Uh, let's hit over Roach. That's 27 I'm taking here, so it's, what, nine? Eight. Eight. Slowly but surely. Uh, I don't think there's much I can do about the dragon, in all honesty, so I think I'm just forced to set and pass here. Oh my god, a set card? This has been a good game one, I gotta say. <laughs> like. Yeah, I think if I had made the 
<laughs> Abyss Dweller at the right time. Maybe it would have been a little worse, but uh, I'll use the extra normal for uh, Tensu on Dragon. Uh, I'm going to trigger Dragon. Uh, I'm going to send Tensu and Tensen. We are going to target... Oh, how much does it realistically matter? Um, Whatever you're grabbing not. is just going to be Xyz fodder. If you hadn't summoned a lead, it could have been a little more than that. God, he's so chill. Cosmo Blazer came in clutch. He's such a big boy. Wow. He's huge. I really do not have a super convincing argument against lead. Like, what am I supposed to do against lead? Just look at him. I'll just summon bear. So the card in hand is Deep Sea Diva. Yes, you do know I have Diva. I don't think any four in the game outs this. Really? Uh, I have one that does, but it sucks ass. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm down. <laughs> I mean, I, I, it sucks so much ass, I don't think I'm making it. I'm going to set one and pass. Yeah, I think this is too good to pass up. I'll sphere an end phase. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so we'll get a Lind, which will automatically die. Mm -hmm. Uh, question is what I want to grab. I think I just go for big guys here. I'll just run out of Megalo and we'll draw. Uh, space the back row. Oh, you're, that was the draw for turn? You're kidding me? That was. The draw for turn was space. Ooh, wow. Me. Okay. Uh, I think we should be able to wrap this one up. What is this? 11, 6. Yeah, yeah uh, we'll go Diva. All right, good game. Ah, man. Uh, MST off the top. I think that I was supposed to win that one, uh, but I was supposed to make uh, Abyss Dweller super early, and I just didn't. But that's what happens when you're not as careful with the matchup as you should be. I just keep forgetting that you can kill me from nowhere. Yeah, I, I don't know what to tell you, buddy. I, I guess just get good. Yeah, like... that that's a nice one. Uh, how about uh, <laughs> how about you get good this game? Oh fuck! I'm sorry. I take it back. <laughs> All right, so uh, we're gonna get two gene warped warwolf here. Okay, fantastic card that's never seen the light of day otherwise. <laughs> okay. And now we are going to just make a mist dweller. Okay, uh, this is you getting good. <laughs> yeah. All right, go ahead, buddy. Shit. All right, I'll draw. <laughs> Taking no chances. <laughs> no chances. All right. Main one. Can I kill Dweller? Oh, Jesus. I don't know if I can. <laughs> Crap. Can I just live through the Dweller? Like, can I just wait? Uh, I will set one and pass. Uh, MST. Oh, uh, that's not happening. Yep. <laughs> oh, that is really lucky. All right. Yeah. Uh, main one. We'll go. Sure. Tensu, extra normal bear, uh, normal, oh, normal. God. Third oh my God, slow down. I'm sorry. I didn't mean it. Oh, it's, it's far too late for that, buddy. <laughs> uh, this is, what if I make a second dweller? I was about to say, do you make the second dweller? Is this deck playing too? Honestly, not terrible. All right, I'm going to go to combat. Woo. Okay, so this is 5,300 total, right? Yeah. 17 plus 16 is 33. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, no, it's a little bit more because bear is uh, plus 100. Yeah. So I take 100 more. Uh, we'll go bear effect. Sure. Uh, bear only triggers if it kills a... Or is it just damage? No, that's gorilla. <laughs> oh, bear is the better one. He's okay, broken, yes. yeah. Uh, yep. We'll go for tanky and we'll declare it in main phase two. Uh, I'm going to get bear. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Uh, I probably should make a a rank four here. I just don't know who it would be. Just make the second dweller. Oh, that honestly, not terrible. The only thing. Are they actually playing two? Or they is are. It just oh, one? of course they are. Uh, oh, can I kill you with cowboy over the course of two turns? Ooh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> maybe if I had one more monster, I'd make Shockmaster. but we'll go roach here. Okay. That seems pretty good. Uh, I'll set one more and back to you. All right, uh, we'll draw. Yes, I get it. Thank you. Appreciate it. Uh, well. <laughs> okay, I'm going to activate Megalo, pitching Megalo and Pike. Sure. Okay. Any response? Are you activating Megalo effect? Yes. All right, I will bottomless. Okay, so this dies. I still get to add. I will get Sphere. Yep. I will set two cards and hope to God I don't die. Stand by main. Uh, you're probably on torrential after the board. Just go to combat here. Uh, wah. I will take the 17. Wah. Here I will sphere. Wah. Yup. That the. Uh... Yu Gi Oh! Right, game three. <laughs>
what I get for opening my big fat mouth. Uh, I should have just taken the game one win in stride and just not said anything. But you know, then you come out guns blazing in game two. God, there was, I don't know how I was beating Dweller. I could have like summoned Megalo and just like tried to kill Dweller, but that just like didn't seem good. And I was hoping like the sphere might actually get me there. But uh, then you had MST and then that was just a disaster. But yep, uh, that's that's Yu-Gi-Oh. What else more is there to say? Uh, this is also Yu-Gi-Oh. Holy shit. Good luck, sir. Good luck to you, too. I will attempt to draw for turn if Dueling Book allows me to do so. Uh, I'll respond. Oh, I just I just didn't draw for turn. <laughs> just like ashing your draw for turn. Could you imagine? Right. Uh, main one. This is going to be a very strange play, yep. but I'm going to see how it goes. I am going to normal summon Deep Sea Diva. Yeah, I, it sounds correct. I will special summon my heavy infantry. Yeah. I will use the ability of heavy infantry to get an extra normal summon of dragoons. Yep. I'm going to sink infantry and diva for armory arm. Still with you. And I'm going to overlay dragoons and armory arm for dweller. Yep. Uh, I will just set a card and I will pass the turn. All right, stand by me. This is weird because like I actually like am even on card economy here. Like when I detach the dragoons. So okay. like... Like, eh, it seems like okay. Uh, let's try for a tanky. Um, let's MST the tanky. Wow, I can't believe you fell for it. Uh, dimensional fissure. Oh, fuck. Yeah. What am I doing here? Well, <clears throat> Tensu seems good. Is that all right with you? Can't do anything about that. Uh, normal bear. Yep. Bear effect pitching Tensu. Uh, so I guess what's neat is that I can still detach here. Dim Fizz doesn't banish, and it's still sent to the graveyard to trigger a water. So even though this gets banished from Dim Fizz, from Bear popping it, I still get to search. That's fine. Uh, I will grab a sea serpent. Um, I don't know. Diva seems fine. Why couldn't Teus be a sea serpent? It's <laughs> right. such a good card. Why just? Why couldn't it be a sea serpent? You know. I will not risk it. I will just grab another diva. Mm, that's unfortunate. Still have another diva. normal summon. Yeah, I don't have another monster. We'll just go to combat. Ooh. Okay. So I'll take sixteen here. You get to trigger the bear. I guess we'll get a tanky, right? I mean, that seems correct. Try it again next turn, you know. Uh, second main, how do I want to do this? Wow. Okay, so you can go into a five here. I think I have to do the same thing I did last time. Um, I'm going to reborn targeting your, uh, I think the dragoons is funniest. Okay, sure. Uh, and then we'll go overlay dragoons and bear for a roach. Let me think about this. Do I actually just want the insurance if you have like a second MST? So many good synchros while you have a roach face up. I mean, <clears throat> indeed. Yeah, I think I, oh man, it's so bad if you have the MST though. I think I'm scared enough of the MST that I have to go, uh, base dweller. Uh, at least it'll be There's 22, right? I was gonna say it's buffed. <laughs> All right, uh, let's go dweller here. Sure. Go ahead. Oh, sorry. Set one. Go ahead. Heart of the cards. Wow. That is way too late. All right. Not firing it. Main one. Uh, how do I do this? Well, you can rest assured, buddy. I don't have MST. Okay. I have heavy. <sighs> it's just so fucking frustrating. Wow. That is, that is abysmal. Why are we just saying that we love playing against heavy storm? <laughs> okay. Uh, warning tanky fissure. Uh, I will normal diva. Yeah. Diva effect. Uh -huh. I will grab marksman. Yep. Sink for cataster. Fine. Kill dweller. I'll trigger it here. Sure. Uh, ooh. uh, second main avarice. Oh my God. Oh, my Let's life put savings. Back. I don't really care about armory arm. I kind of want to leave like something in grave, but nah, fuck, I'll put everything back. All right, we'll draw two. Uh, not great. I'll set one, throw it to you. Go ahead. Stand by main. Yeah, go ahead. All right, I still need to kill you. That's part of the problem Shouldn't here. Shouldn't be too difficult uh, for this deck. Normal diva. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, get marksman mm -hmm. battle. Uh, this is 22, two. 200, 14, 18. Correct. Marksman gets dragoons. Uh, second main, uh, I could Trish you here if I actually played it. That'd be kind of funny. Uh, it doesn't seem like there's any, like, synchro that's really worth going into. There's, like, cute stuff with Dulorin, but I don't think it's very good. Uh, I will just 
pass. Hmm. Darkhold. Fuck! <laughs> yep. Okay, so what's the set card? If it's Abyss Fear, you would have already activated it. Uh, if it is Torrential, Mirror Force, Solemn, I'm fucked. I just have to hope it's MST. Uh, I'm gonna go Bear here. Shit, it's pretty good. Yeah. Wow. I will take it. Okay, Trigger Bear. Uh, I'm gonna set... Tanky. Main two, I'll activate Tanky. The hell is that set card? Uh, I guess I'll take... God, I kind of just want another bear. Let's go with Gorilla. Okay. All right, uh, back to you. I will draw. Sick. Yeah, that should do it. Uh, Megalo pitch Dragoon's lead. Jesus Christ. Yeah, that's uh, that's pretty good. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we'll get a uh, sphere uh, off Dragoon's. I really don't think it matters. Yeah. So this is what? Megalo seven, uh, seven over your thing. So it's seven. So I just need to find a way to do 1700. Yeah, I got this. So this is Diva. I mean, you can just tribute a monster for Megalo. <laughs> I could also just double attack with Megalo. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, that's because I know your card in hand. So, yeah, that's the end of it. Holy shit. Holy shit. Uh, it was Mind Crush was the set, actually. Oh, that's strange. There was no opportune moment to do. I was actually, th it's funny you Darkhold. I was thinking about blind calling Darkhold and just risking losing a card because I'm like, okay, Dark Hole's like realistic. On the only anyway, thing that yeah. gets me out of this. Yeah, exactly. But um, uh, yeah, you know, I was just gonna, I was just gonna hit the card out of your hand on your next turn, try to get like double gorilla. But heavy storm, man. You know, it's yeah, uh, it's epic. It's based. It's red pilled. Um, oh geez, what a catastrophe. I I feel like I probably threw that first game managing my rank fours incorrectly, but. Uh, I mean, you, I mean, you've shown twice now this mermail deck, if you give it an inch, it will take a mile for sure. But I think we got to see like a lot of the strengths of your deck for sure. Like game two, especially mm -hmm. we got to see it just take over instantly, like opening rabbit and then just following up with like another just solid push, whether it's for huge damage or just being able to go into a second rank four just to solidify your position. Uh, back that up with all the traps that your deck plays and the fact that you're able to play cards like, you know, dimensional fissure and the like, because your deck really doesn't care about the graveyard apart from like dragon exactly which yeah. like oh no fire fist without dragon whatever will they do mm -hmm. right uh it's just like a very strong deck and bear is like just the centerpiece that holds the deck all together because just being able to constantly get you advantage but then convert that advantage into popping my cards as well i mean there's a reason why fire fist was able to like stand up to the, all the top meta threats and was one of the best decks around this time and would be for like the next several years this is also a very early uh iteration of fire yes fist. It's on yes. way too many monsters. Uh, it's tripled up on Gorilla and Bear and Dragon. Uh, game one specifically, I just bricked on too many guys uh, after the... Like, uh, the opener was very good, but uh, after the Marksman plays, it was just like, okay, I'm drawing monster after monster after monster. Later versions would shave it to... I think usually you would play like one or two Bear, like one Gorilla, no Dragon. And you would supplement this engine with two Reborn Tengu. Uh, just kind of a, a decent uh, four-star monster that makes fours and replenishes itself super easily. Uh, Tencent's eventually left the deck. Uh, there were arguments about this card being included uh, pretty much the entire time that it was included, but I think eventually the Tencent haters won out. As new rank fours are sort of revealed, uh, they start mattering more and more as well. That's not to say that uh, your deck is done evolving either. We still have a, a fair amount of Mermail to deal with. Yeah, it's funny. We really only saw Teus in game one, and I think that's just because of the length of the game. But, like, Teus makes a huge difference, just acting as both another uh, discard outlet just to trigger the Atlanteans or just uh, any of the... Getting uh, Waters in Grave, because another card that we didn't really get to see much of apart from game one uh, was Gunned, actually. Gunned yeah. being able to resurrect your monsters as well is just insane. Uh, and the, uh, I would say actually the centerpiece of what made this deck what it was at the time was because now we have Teus, we have lead, which I'm happy we got to show off at least once, uh, just uh -huh. being a big chonker, but, uh, we didn't get to show off Gaios, sadly. Uh, Gaios, oh, Gaios was a so huge problem in this format, and because of that... Any time that there was just two level sevens on the field, you could just threaten Gaios, and it was almost like the end of the game at that point, because mm -hmm. being able to just be a 2800 that could negate the effects of all opponent's monsters that had less attack than it, and making it so at level five or higher couldn't attack it, 
it was just this annoying asshole of a card that was incredibly easy to summon now thanks to the new support in Cosmo Blazer. This deck actually centralized around Abyss Squall, which I didn't even get to show off, mm -hmm. which is like Soul Charge for Mermail. You get to target three Mermails and special on them in defense. Their effects are negated and they can't attack, but who gives a fuck when you can just summon two sevens and a Lind? Lind will pop itself and get another monster in end phase regardless, and you get a Gaios for literally no reason. The deck is just ridiculous, and it can do way more than I was able to uh, actually achieve this episode. There wasn't really like an opportunity to like for me to go into Gaios without risking just getting hit by like Solemn Warning or like Bottomless or something. Yeah. Uh, this deck is playing triple MST. It's also playing Forbidden Lance, which we didn't get to see any of, just Lance to ensure so that your Gaios sticks. Format. Yeah. Absolutely. And so uh, just the cards that I needed to stick Gaios weren't really there, so I had to play it differently. Uh, not necessarily optimally, I'm sure, as all the Mermail players are like squirming in their seats, yelling at their TV screens. I still think that this was actually a good back and forth altogether. I think the first game, especially, like we were just down to the wire where we're both just on like top decking and just hoping to be able to like squeeze it out. Mm -hmm. And then we got to see your deck go off in the second game. I think my deck went off a bit here in this third game. I, I think overall, it was a pretty good representation of like how this format looks and how it looks for like the foreseeable future. I mean, these are two of the top decks for quite some time. Yep. So guys, that's going to wrap it up for another episode. Let's go ahead and shout out the patrons as always. A big shout to Shout1317, Moto, Cameron Smith, Tim 0 x 3 Ian Musa, Chaotic Meeple, SJ Winchester, Part 2, Pony Stark, Dan the Man, Hoban, MBT, Play Medulce, Synchro Guy, Ole, Yusuf Asin 05, Mystic Walk, I Ship MBT, and Simo, Draconic Rockside, Logan, Thomas, Peter, Gregory, Thomas, Elson, Jordan, Coons, Calvin, Iron Blades, and Purius, Jesse, with True Nergasm, Brother, Paul, Chris, So, David, Lou, Skyros, Dylan, Hunter, John, Two Base, Extremely Vulgar Man, Brody, Eastwood, Day, Sir, Carlos, DT, Flannel, Daddy, Hornet, Give Me Speed Reuter, Give Me Death, Jonah, Messenger, Oh my God, guys, please read your cards. TC Gaming, thanks for the sleeves, Dad. Matthew Brady, Dyer the Egyptian Editor, Max Tom Russell, why read your cards when you can just click buttons? Ben Snatch Shield for Prague 2021, Helios 515, paint French girls like one of your MBTs, Black Acre, say Gage Gang Engage three times fast, the entire state of Indiana, D's Cards, MBT fans gaming more than COVID, Simping for Simo, Mark Jackson, Tyler H, Justice for Queen Tiramisu, and Simo's Harem of Sexy Yugi Tubers. Thank you so much for watching the video, and we will see you next time.